In this video I'm going to take a look at oxidation number. So you can see I've drawn three substances on the board there, hydrogen, chlorine and hydrogen chloride. And we're just going to talk through um, the information that's on the board at the moment. So in H2, the oxidation number of each hydrogen is zero. In Cl2, the oxidation number of each chlorine is zero. But in HCl, the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one and the oxidation number of chlorine is minus one. So why the difference? Well often the best place to start is with the definition. So there's the definition on the board there. So oxidation number is the number of electrons that an atom uses to bond with the atoms of another element. So you can see in the first two you've only got one element present, so you've got two H's or two CL's. So they're not bonding to another type of element and so their oxidation number is zero. In HCl however, the H is bonding to a CL, so something different. The CL is bonding to an H, again something different. So we need to look at how many electrons are they using. So in HCl, the hydrogen is using one electron to bond to this chlorine and so we give it an oxidation number of plus one. I'll explain the plus in a moment. The chlorine is using one of its electrons to bond to the hydrogen and so it has an oxidation number of minus one. So the number in oxidation number is how many electrons it's using. The charge is to do with electronegativity. So if you've already studied electronegativity, you'll know that chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen. And so the more electronegative atom present takes the negative sign. So chlorine is minus one. Hydrogen's less electronegative, so it's plus one. So you can see there are dot and cross diagrams helping us to um, work out the oxidation number. There are also a set of rules that we can use. So I'm going to go through the rules now. So the simplest rule is the one about elements. All elements in their natural state have an oxidation number of zero, and that's because of the definition. Elements aren't bonding to anything different. They're not bonding to another type of element, and so their oxidation number is zero by the definition. If we have members of groups one, two, and three in compounds, they are always plus one, plus two, and plus three respectively. So if you've got sodium in compounds, it's always plus one. If you've got magnesium in compounds, it's always plus two. And if you've got aluminium in compounds, it's always plus three. If you just think about their outer electron configuration, group one have one electron in their outer shell, and so they will use that one electron when they bond to other atoms. There's a rule for fluorine, so in compounds, Fluorine atoms always have an oxidation number of minus one. So if you think fluorine's in group seven, so it always requires one electron to complete its outer shell. So there's the one explained. Why is it always negative? And that's because fluorine is the most electronegative element. So it will always be minus one. We've got a rule for oxygen. So when oxygen is found in compounds, it's usually minus two. So again, if we think about the two, it's in group six, it wants two more electrons to complete its outer shell. So there's the two explained. Y minus, usually minus, and that's because oxygen is the second most electronegative element. So unless it's bonded to fluorine, it's going to carry that minus sign in its oxidation number. We've got a rule for hydrogen. So in compounds, hydrogen is usually plus one, and the only reason it would change to minus one would be if it was bonded to a metal. Metals always carry positive oxidation numbers, and so if you've got compounds such as metal hydrides, so you've got a couple of examples on the board there, NaH and MgH2, then the metal, so in this one here, there's a group one element in a compound, so that would be plus one, the sodium would be plus one, and so the hydrogen would have to be minus one 
to maintain the neutrality of the compound. We'll look at some examples like that in a moment. Magnesium, we've got group 2 in a compound, so the rule for that is plus 2 for the magnesium. So these two hydrogens have to keep this neutral, and so each one would be minus 1. And the final rule I've got for you is in compounds, chlorine is usually minus 1. So chlorine is quite an electronegative element, and so the minus sign is usually seen. And chlorine is in group 7, and so we normally see it using one elect there's one electron involved uh, when it bonds to other um, atoms. But sometimes, as you'll see, I'll give you some examples of where it changes. And that's obviously where examiners love to test your understanding. The other quick point I want to make before we start looking at some examples is that oxidation number deals with individual atoms. So I'm going to throw some examples at you where we have more than one of the same type of atom. So I'll remind you of what's on the board just now. Individual atoms. So we'll start with this one. So the question could read something like this. What's the oxidation number of carbon in carbon dioxide? So you can see the dot and cross diagram up there, which we can refer to in a moment. But I just want to talk you through a nice easy way to do oxidation number. And we're going to use the rules to help us to establish the answer to the question. Now the assumption is there'll, there'll just be one atom in the compound that you don't know the oxidation number for. So if we think of this example, there's a rule for oxygen. Each oxygen is minus two. Remember it's for individual atoms. So we've got 2 times minus 2. So that underlying number there, that's the oxidation number of each oxygen. So that's going to give us a combined negative charge of minus 4. There's no charge on carbon dioxide. It's a neutral molecule. So this one carbon has to cancel out minus 4. So the oxidation number of carbon must be plus 4. And if you look at the dot and cross diagram, you can see those blue crosses there represent the outer electrons for the carbon. It's using one, two, three, four electrons to bond to other atoms. So the dot and cross can help, but I prefer this. In an exam, I would much rather do that than draw one of those. So if we go for carbon in CH4 now, We've got rules for hydrogen. Hydrogen, unless it's bonded to a metal, has an oxidation number of plus one. And so carbon's not a metal, so the rule applies. So we've got four times plus one. So that's the oxidation number of each hydrogen. So that gives us a combined positive charge now of plus four. And so now carbon's oxidation number must be minus 4 to main, maintain the neutrality of the compound. So it's still using 4 electrons, but because of electronegativity difference, the hydrogen is less electronegative than the carbon, and so we've got this minus sign now in front of the oxidation number. I've just looked up the electronegativity values for carbon and hydrogen, written them up in green there, and you can see Carbon's got an electronegativity value of 2.5 versus hydrogen's 2.2. And so you can see from the values that carbon is going to have this negative oxidation number when it's bonded to hydrogen. As well as neutral compounds, we need to be able to work out oxidation numbers of um, atoms present in ions. So I've got this example for you, the carbon atom in the carbonate ion. So slightly different we've got to bear in mind the the charge now so again we've got some information from the rules about oxygen so remember oxygen's minus two unless it's bonded to fluorine so each oxygen minus two so that's three times minus two is minus six so this carbon when it combines with these three oxygens has got to leave this charge so the carbon must have an oxidation number of plus 4. So plus 4 combined with minus 6 leaves a 2 minus charge. How about sulphur in the sulphate ion, SO4, 
2 minus. So again, apply the rules. 4 oxygens, so that's 4 times minus 2, minus 8. So what must that sulphur be to leave that 2 minus charge? Of course, it's plus 6. We'll have a look at a transition metal example now. So we've got manganese in the MnO4 minus ion. So again, apply the rules. We've got four oxygens, so that's four times minus two is minus eight. We need to be left with that one minus charge, so the manganese must be in the plus seven oxidation state, so its oxidation number is plus seven. We'll talk a bit about the name of this ion now. This is known as the manganate seven ion and we use a Roman 7, and the 7 is obviously indicating the oxidation number of the manganese. So we'll look at a, another example of a transition metal ion now. So what is the oxidation number of each chromium in the Cr2O7 2 minus ion? We'll just give you a couple of seconds to work that out. So we've got seven oxygens, so that's seven times minus two is minus 14. So we've got two chromiums, so those two chromiums need to leave a two minus charge when combined with this minus 14. So the two chromiums must be putting in plus 12 combined so therefore each one divided by two, it's plus six. So each chromium has an oxidation number of plus six. And you may already know the name for this, but there it is there in red, it's called the dichromate six ion. So that Roman six is telling us that the chromium, each chromium is in the plus six oxidation state. I'm going to finish with some examples that are often asked on exams where you're given the name of the compound and you have to suggest its formula. So the first one we look at is manganese 4 oxide. What's the formula going to be for manganese 4 oxide? So we'll just put on the board what it's going to contain. It's going to contain an MN and an O. And that Roman 4 there, that IV, is telling us that this is in the plus 4 oxidation state. Now we know from the rules that an oxygen has a minus 2 oxidation number. So if we just had one of each, then that won't work. It won't be neutral because we've got plus 4 with a minus 2. So we need two of these. And that would give us minus 2 times 2 minus 4. And that would keep the compound neutral, which it needs to be, because there's no charge on this compound. So it's MnO2. We'll look at an example with iron in now. So what's the formula going to be for iron 3 oxide? So plus 3 for the iron from this Roman 3 here. It's the oxidation number. We know that oxygen is minus 2. So again, that's not going to cancel out, just one of each. So we need to get the three and the two to cancel. So we need to get them up to six. So if we multiply this by two, that's going to give us plus six. If we multiply the minus two by three, that's going to give us minus six, and then they'll cancel. So the formula of iron three oxide is Fe2O3. So hopefully that was helpful and you can work out oxidation numbers from formulae. Um, don't forget the rules. Those rules are really, really important. You need to know those off by heart and you shouldn't get them wrong. And hopefully you'll be just like me who says things like, I love oxidation numbers, me.